This video is on WordPress Demo Builder by Moto Press. This is the plugin that I use to create the live demo sites that I use often with my Beaver Builder videos. And here is an example. So a visitor would come here, enter their email address, click try demo. This will give them a, an Ajax message saying to check their emails and their spam folder. And when they do that, find the email, they'll have a link. They click on that link and it builds out a new copy of this site in a subdirectory, so it adds some gobbledygook letters to the end here. And depending on the settings that I put in for them, they'll have a certain length of time and access to certain areas. So that's how it works, basically. And I've done a number of these. They are available on my beaverjunction.com site. So here are all the live demos that I've set up for here. But I really got interested in this as something for my business. So I wanted, when we adopted a page builder, I wanted to show the clients how easy it would be for them to be able to update their content as a selling point. So a try before you buy for them. So that's exactly what I've done here. It's the same thing. And I've set up some simple templates so they can just try this out and I've configured things to make it simple for them. So let me go back to the MotoPress site. The reason I'm doing this video now, and I'm doing it in a rush, so apologies in advance if I'm not too clear on what I'm saying, but there is a 50% sale on, and it's the 11th of September as I'm recording this, and this runs out on the 13th. So this is a sale to celebrate seven years of being in business. So even if you miss this, it's really very reasonably priced here. So a single site use would cost you just under $80. And this is a one-time payment, lifetime updates with one year of support, and unlimited sites is just under $200. So obviously that halves to $100 and $40 roughly. Okay, now I have been asked about this quite a few times as I have these live demos, and it's only now that I'm doing a video, and it's not just because of this sale, it's because I've been uncertain about it. So I started building them in 2014, and I've written about it here, so I won't go into too much detail, but I started with something known as Ninja Demos, which was made by the people who create Ninja Forms. It was a really unique product. It was exciting, but it was very buggy, and they didn't improve it. It didn't quite do the job. I I wanted it to do without me adding other plugins to set permissions and hide things. So it wasn't that great. And what I think's happened, or I'm certain it has, is that Moto Press, when this has died, have taken it and forked it and made it their own. So it came out and I adopted it in January of 2017. And I think it was much improved upon. Certainly it's not had any bugs. And now I've been using it for quite some time and it's been getting updated. And I, you know, I kind of trust it. I will say that it's not something which is mission critical for me. So I don't need to be worried about who I'm buying the plugins from as much as I would under normal circumstances. It's been working for me perfectly well. In fact, so much better than what I originally had, which was more expensive. And we are seeing the updates for them. So I'm not going to go into all of the details there because you can just quickly read over my points there. Let me go back to their site because really you can find out everything you need to here. There's another demo you can try out of theirs here. You can see their documentation over here, which is quite thorough and there's a lot in there. I'll come back to that in a moment. And I think it's pretty easy to understand the features that they've got here. And most of their features were kind of unique. So even if they did fork a product, they did add in quite a lot. So they did invest something in this, I think. So I'm quite happy with this. So I'm going to show you, you can take a look at this. I'll just show you an example from the back end and how I'm using it. So if I go over to my site here, the first thing I should say about this is this is not the only way you can display things. In fact, I think I've got it open. Yes, you can actually have things pop up. I think it's got it here. Let's have a look on their other product. There we are. Yes, so we got this and that pops up. So you can have that version set up, but I've never used this. And well, all I needed to do, I'm using the page builder here. I can drag it in their WordPress widget. And I did add some extra CSS styling to make it look 
the way that I want to, which I've included in my post. And you can add and take away from this, you can change the message that comes, the Ajax message here, and you can put in your titles yourself. In this case, I've used the page builder for it. So what happens when my folks come, they will go to, let me just go into another browser because I've done this. They will go into this view. So the plugin itself, as you can see here, there's the subdirectory URL on there and it's removed my titles. Now, some of that's been done with Beaver Builder in my case because we've got conditionals that we can set depending on whether someone's logged in. So I've added the video, taken away the titles, but the plugin, the Demo Builder plugin will actually remove the form when you return here. And you can also choose once somebody's clicked where they're going to land as well. So if you want them to go into the back end of your site, you're able to do that. And I've just set things up here. so when they click through the url is my beaver builder page builder one and when you're logged in you go straight into the page builder and that's open for them if not you can see the template but not be in the page builder so that's how i set things up and just in case you're interested i've used here partly because i just got this anyway but i do like it is the wp portfolio plugin which is by brainstorm force i got it as part of the astra agency package so that's what i'm using but you could just use any image if you wanted to do the same okay let's just go into the back end so i can show you the features so i'm on this page i'm in the settings on that site so if you've not, I'll just quickly cover this. If you've not set up a multi-site before, it's not that difficult and the instructions are actually included here. Um, there is the potential to have things go wrong for you, but there are a lot of articles how to correct things. So really all you do in the first place is you take the snippet, put it into your WP config file, which means that in WordPress you have another option and you can then tick on subdirectories there once you've done that you will get another screen where you'll have to copy and paste a bit of information, put that into your WP config file again, and then another bit which you have to overwrite in your HT access file. And that's it. Then once you've done that, you are up and running with multi-site. And when you're doing this, then you can just go into the, your admin side here. And once you've got the plugin in, it's working. So you could do it either way. You could set up the multi-site first and then build out your site or you could do it the other way around which is what I've done so let's just go through the settings here so I'm going through these main settings so it tells you what you can do I use this disable registration that just hides the form at the front I do this when I've got alpha and beta testing demo site available when it's there's no alpha or beta I close that off you can set the user roles here so all the default ones and I'm using editor here because I want things simple for our clients we can add this reset button which puts a button on the toolbar in the front where they can click and reset which is basically allowing them to build out yet another site on this i don't do that because i i don't see the need for that but it's there uh you can set the expiration of the sandbox so that's your site and when that's going to end in minutes hours days or months over here and you can decide what's going to happen when it's deleted, archived, or deactivated. Normally, I'm deleting. In this case, I am with these client ones, keeping them for longer. And there's where you can redirect after activation to the place that you want people to turn up. It's got uh, Google Recapture version 2 here on there. I haven't got it turned on. And you can just turn that on through the little uh, module that's here. So I just ticked it off there. But I've got it, the settings available over here. That's pretty much the basic settings. Then you've got your email notifications of which you can change. I don't change the admin ones, so let me just quickly show you this. This is the, the one that goes out. This is how I've set it up. There are a few short codes to pers personalize it. One little tip on this one is if you're using the personalization for the time period, um, you want to be aware that that just shows you in hours. So I've changed this and dropped that because I'm using a week on this particular example and it doesn't make sense to tell people it in hours, I don't think. So I changed that. There's a way of testing. I'm just going to show you the email that comes in. There we are. That's the email. There's the clicky link. And also I will get um, an email myself. I haven't changed any of these telling me when somebody's actually created their site and who's actually sort of logged in there so i've got that information i know what's going on there okay that covers that we've got a toolbar option which is quite cool i won't set this up by sticking this little 
end onto your URL, it will add in a, a toolbar a example. So let me just show you this. It's probably easiest to show you here. Uh, I have not needed this, but I can see on a lot of demos, here we are, the responsive toolbar. So it'll add this, so you can see responsive settings for this. It has a little tick box, so you can remove it as well as a client. And also there are some other things you can add to it, so you can add some uh, button text and some links and everything on there. So that's quite cool. And your uh, logo, I have set this up and it looks quite nice. You can put your little logo on the top. So plenty to explore on this one. System information, well, that's nothing much. It just tells you that you're running all the right stuff and that you've got cron jobs running so it can automatically delete anything that you want to go. And um, finally, there is this MailChimp settings here. So you can set this up and you can have double subscribes in for this one, but only for MailChimp. That's the only integration that they've got with this one. But of course, you collect emails yourself if you wanted to. So let's have a look at the other things. So we can set the restrictions, what people can see when they're in here. So I've set these up. And it's basically what you tick on is what they allow to access. And I could just show you the view from the inside of the actual live one for this. So if I go in there, so there we are, it's a very cleaned up. I've got all of the Beaver Builder stuff, pages and posts and media, and that's it. In Ninja demos, you were never allowed to add any media in. In this case, you are actually allowed to do that. I don't, I don't think there's any real huge security risks with that one, I suppose. If you've got security set up, okay, but you might want to decide whether they can or not do that. So that cleans everything up and it's pretty easy to do and you're allowed to disable any URLs as well that somebody can go to. Let's have a look. The next thing is just the sandboxes here, but you can find that actually to go to all of your sites. You can see them here, but you can see who's in, when they register, when it's going to expire. And you can go into the dashboard and see what they're doing if you really want to do, because you'll be a super admin and will be able to do that. I think that covers the main things. There is one thing that you probably want to be aware of, because I didn't know about this for years, um, and that is... <laughs> that although it clears away everything, you are sharing your database with a multi-site. So when a new site's created, um, your, obviously your database gets bigger. And it's fine because it deletes all of the default tables that are there in WordPress. But if you've got other plugins, for example, Gravity Forms and WordFence, both of which I use, which add their own tables, it doesn't automatically delete those. So I ended up with one database which grew to uh, 20 gigabytes. I mean, we did have thousands upon thousands of people go in that particular one because Beaver Builder promoted it. So that's how it grew. So there is a, a way around this. Well, let me first say, you probably won't need to worry about it. In my case, this is just using the page builder I've not used WordFence which is usually my favorite I've used something else for security and everything here is just right into the default tables that are going into options or something so they get deleted so it's not an issue with this one it's just other sites and if you need the solution they do provide this also in their documentation but you do probably need to be a bit of a developer maybe they will give you support for that in the early days so there's a, a kind of a script here well there's a plugin basically there's a plugin you can create where if you know what you can put in you can automatically delete the uh, tables that you don't want to be there for you you can do it that way I've been doing it a very clumsy way because I didn't know about that and what I had to do and this is on the example of somewhere else where there are some listed here it wasn't too big a job for me to do it because I installed the advanced database cleaner free plugin the free version of it anyway and it was pretty easy for me to tell what was um, the actual new tables, not the original or site tables, because I either got numbers like this on the front of them all, and I could just actually select all of these and delete them very quickly until I got to around page one, which would be the actual ones I wanted. And also, sometimes I saw with prefixes, the prefix had gone to the end of the known prefix for the site, which I set up in the first place. So it wasn't such a big job to do it manually to clean those out. But you know, it may be good to be aware of this. I think I've covered everything I needed to do in this video. I hope that's useful. And I hope if you do want something like this, you're able to 
pick up the deal. Okay, well, thanks for listening to me and I'll talk to you again, hopefully, in another video. Of course, please thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel as well. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.